Hi friends, this is tech expert Neil and you are watching howasol.com. In today's video, I'll show you how you can install Windows 7 on a flash drive. I'll be using this flash drive. This is a 32 GB flash drive, but you'll require any flash drive that is 8 GB or bigger in size. Apart from a flash drive, you'll also need a tool which is known as Rufus and you need a Windows system. It can be any Windows 10 or 11 system. So these are the main basic requirements. The, using the Rufus tool will not only be creating the installation USB disk, but will also be downloading the ISO files that are provided by Microsoft. Microsoft has long removed the support for Windows 7. The links to download Windows 7 is not easily accessible from the Microsoft site, but using the Rufus tool we will be able to download Windows 7 ISO files from their website. Before we start this process, I would like to tell you that there are several disadvantages of installing Windows 7 in 2022. The number one disadvantage is since Microsoft has removed the support for Windows 7, your system will be vulnerable to cyber attacks that is using viruses and malware since the security updates are no longer available for Windows 7. Apart from that, you will also face compatibility problems with your hardware. Since newer hardware are no longer providing drivers for Windows 7, you might face trouble installing a new hardware accessory to your Windows 7 system. Apart from the hardware, there is also a problem in the software front, where various software providers are dropping support for Windows 7. For example, Google Chrome browser is going to drop support for Windows 7 in 2023 January. So these are the main drawbacks of installing Windows 7 in 2022. If you have got a low powered system, there are other alternatives apart from Windows. If your system is too low powered to support Windows 10 and 11, you can install Linux based system. These, these Linux based systems nowadays also have a cloud based version which is the Google's Chrome OS. I have got a dedicated video of how you can install Chrome OS. Recently Google has launched Chrome OS for aging laptops. You can find that link how you can install it on your computer by clicking on that i icon over here. With all that set aside, let's go to the computer and let's start the process step by step how you can install Windows 7 in 2022. Let's get started. Okay, the first step is to download Rufus. So to do that, I'll provide you the link down in the video description or you can Google search it like this. Open your Chrome browser and type Rufus GitHub releases. Hit enter and the first link will be the GitHub page, official GitHub page of Rufus software. Just click on that. Over here the latest release at present is 3.19. You can download the latest release that is being shown at the time you access. You have to download this exe file over here. Just hit that. Click on that. Okay, once the exe file has been downloaded, make sure you have connected a USB pen drive to your computer. I have already done that. You can see in this over here new volume it is a it is a 16 gb pen drive the usable space is 14.3 gb so with that you can now open the downloaded file by clicking on this over here it will ask for administrative privileges granted by clicking yes and now it will automatically detect the pen drive and it should be listed over here and make sure that this is the correct drive on which you want to install the windows 7 installation files because this drive will be completely erased. So if your pen drive has got some important data on it, make sure to take a backup before proceeding ahead. Because after this step, the entire device will be formatted and then the installation files will be copied onto it. Okay, so once we are sure that this is the correct drive, now let's look at how you can download Windows 7 ISO file. If you had launched Rufus for the first time, there would be a pop-up message being shown do you want to check for online update? Make sure to hit that yes button. Because in Rufus to allow it to download the Windows 7 ISO file, you need to make sure that this permission to check for online updates has to be granted. So make sure to hit that yes button. If you have by chance selected no button, then you can change it by selecting over here settings. And over here from the check for updates option, it, if you had selected no, it would be shown as disabled. You just simply have to change it to daily, weekly or monthly. Anything but other than disabled. Once you have done that, close it and then you have to restart the program. 
so that that particular option to allow downloading of ISO files will then will be visible. So, so once you have got the update check enabled, then you can click on this button over here. This button will be visible drop down button from select. You have to change it to download over here. Once this is select changed to download, click on this download button and then it will load the script file to get the Windows 7 ISO files. In fact, using this script, you can download any Windows installation. It can be Windows 11, 10, 8.1, 7. So all these versions of Windows are available for download using this tool. There can be a problem that I faced personally. This particular screen was not visible to me. So if, if you are facing that kind of problem, there could be an issue with your Windows installation itself because this script requires PowerShell. If your PowerShell on your Windows system is not working properly, then this option will not be visible. So I fixed the problem by installing new updates that fix the PowerShell issue with the Windows 10 installation. If you are facing some similar issue, you might need to check for corrupted Windows files or you can update your Windows system to make sure that the PowerShell is working properly. To check whether your PowerShell is working properly or not, you can try opening it up by typing over here in the run command PowerShell. Windows PowerShell and this window should pop up. If you are not able to see this window, then there is some issue with your PowerShell. Okay. If you can see this screen, then it, that means that everything is working fine. So now we'll select Windows 7 from the drop down list by clicking on the drop down list and selecting Windows 7 and then hit the continue button over here. And now in this, there are, you can only select Windows 7 with SP1, build number is 7601. So we'll hit continue. And in this, you can select the various editions of Windows 7, Ultimate, Professional, Home, Premium. If you have got a license of Windows 7, you can select that particular version. Most probably that license number will not work because Windows 7 has officially been stopped from distribution. But you can try it out. I'll be not activating my Windows 7. So I'll select the best version that is the Windows 7 Ultimate and then hit continue. And in the language, you can See, there's only one language option available. You have to select that English and continue. In architecture, you can select x64, that is 64-bit, and x86, that is a 32-bit system. So, we'll select the 64-bit system, and then we'll click on this download using a browser, and hit download. Now, this will open up the Chrome browser, and in that, the download will start over here. Now, this is quite a big file. You can see it's around 5.5. 5 GB in size and depending on your internet connectivity it will take some time since I've got a quite fast internet connection it shows me around 5 minutes it will get downloaded within 5 minutes and this actually downloads from the Microsoft server so if you can see the location from where it's downloading you can see download.microsoft.com downloads this is the file location but this particular link is not available easily from the official Microsoft website because the Windows 7 support has been removed but using this tool we can access this link and download it from the microsoft official server so you have got full assurance that the copy of the windows 7 that you are receiving is the official unaltered version of windows 7 directly from microsoft okay friends the download has finished as you can see now let's start the installation process we'll go to our rufus software over here select the drop down menu and change it to select and then click on select and then select the windows 7 iso file that you have downloaded just now it will be on in the default download location in my case it is in the downloads folder select it and click open now you have got multiple options what you want to do standard windows installation or windows to go installation if you want to use this pen drive to install windows 7 on a different system select the standard windows installation if you want your Windows 7 system to be run from the pen drive, then you can go for Windows to go system. So we'll be doing a standard Windows 7 installation. So we'll select this in the image options. In the partition scheme, you can select depending on whether your computer in which you are planning to install Windows 7 supports GPT or not. If your system is less than 10 years old, then it would be supporting the GPT partition scheme. If you've got a very old system, then I would suggest you go for MBR option. And the target system, if you select GPT, then it has to be UEFI. If you select MMBR, then you can then go for BIOS. So since we are going for GPT, it will automatically select as UEFI. You can then change the level of the 
flash disk i will type select windows 7 and the file type file system type is limited to ntfs and the cluster size you can keep it at default you can keep all these options at the default options everything is nothing has to be changed and then you simply have to click the start button make sure to check the drive that you have selected for installing the windows 7 i also file onto because this drive will be erased completely so i have selected the correct drive so now i'll click the start button it will give you a warning that the, all the data on this drive will be erased make sure to double check it click ok and now the installation process will happen depending on how fast your system is it might take from 5 minutes to 15 minutes so if you've used a usb 3.0 pen drive then it will happen quicker okay friends installation process has finished you can see it took a lot of time for me this was because i was using virtual box for creation of installation it took me 40 minutes to create this installation disk but in your case it, it will be created much quicker so once the installation is completed you will see this in the status ready message and then when you open this pc you should see the pen drive with the label that you have selected windows 7 and over here you can see all this are the windows 7 setup files you can now take this pen drive and connect it to the system in which you want to install windows 7 and once you boot the system you need to press the boot key and this particular key allows you to open up the boot menu for your particular system and if you do not know what particular boot key is available for your particular system you can google search it this is a list of menu keys it is available on this particular website you can see for different manufacturer it lists down the boot menu key and this varies quite a lot depending on the laptop manufacturer and the motherboard manufacturer for your desktop computer so you can see acer has got escape f12 f9 apple option key asus f8 escape key for so there are a lot of variation depending on the system manufacturer so what i would suggest you to do is you can google search for your particular system for example you have got a dell xps 15 laptop you can type dell xps 15 boot menu key and google will tell you for bringing up the one time boot menu key press the f12 key so for your particular laptop model you can type this particular search term that is your brand name followed by a model number and the keyword boot menu key now if you have got a desktop system you'll have to type the name of your motherboard manufacturer or your motherboard name for example in my case i've got a msi board it is a b460 tomahawk so you have to know the motherboard name so my for my particular case search query will be msi b450 tomahawk you can see for my particular case it is f11 over here it is mentioned f11 so depending on your particular manufacturer once you turn on the system you will be shown the logo of your system manufacturer for example an msi computer for this particular example you can see the keys for entering to the boot menu is mentioned over here on the left hand side and you can see it says f11 key for boot menu so like that when you just turn on your system this particular screen will be shown and at the bottom side of the screen or at the top side of the screen this particular option will be shown to press a key to open the boot menu so you have to continuously keep pressing the key repeatedly to open the boot menu once you have opened the boot menu you will see a screen something like this where all your hard disk and ssd and pen drives that are connected to your system will be listed so on this particular system this supports both booting through legacy as well as uefi so we have created uefi boot if you have created a legacy boot that is the bios boot option while creation of the pen drive then it will be listed over here in this particular section legacy boot if you have created using uefi that is the gpt partition then it will be listed in this particular section so over here you should see your pen drive name mentioned like if you have connected a sandisk pen drive so here some sandisk will be mentioned so depending on your particular device name you have to select that pen, your pen drive from this list use your arrow keys and you have to hit the enter key to boot using that particular device once you have selected the pen drive using the boot menu and you have booted the windows 7 installation system now let's look at how you can install windows 7 system using the installation usb drive 
So you will see the windows loading up and then you will see this screen that is the install windows. And over here you can select the language that you want to install it in. It will keep the default English. You can see there is only English available over here. You have to just select next over here. Click on next and then we will click on install now. It will load the setup files. Click on I accept the license agreement. Click next. And now depending on your system what you want to do. If you want to do a fresh install that is a full hard disk erase. And you want to just reformat the entire system. Then you can simply do a custom installation over here. If you already have a Windows 7 system present on it. Then you can go for upgrade option. Then it will only erase that particular drive. And it will leave the other drives remaining. So we will go for a custom option and you can see in my case the entire drive is blank. It is an unallocated 32 GB drive. This is basically a virtual machine. So I will select the drive. So depending on your system your hard disks will be mentioned over here. And you can click on this advanced option by over here and then you can select the drive on which you want to install Windows. Since I want to install it on the entire hard disk. I will select this drive and then click on new option since this is unallocated we will have to first format it and then it will allow us to install on it so we will click new and allocate the entire space to this particular drive click apply ok it will say that the windows might need to create extra partitions to boot your system so hit ok to allow it to do that you can see it has created one more partition this allows for system rescue process basically if your windows is not booting up then you choose this partition to allow to rescue your system anyways now select the bigger partition that has it has created over here and then click on next it will now copy all the files on this partition after the files have been copied it will then reboot the system and then it will load the system from your hard disk now at present it is being loaded from your usb drive so i'll fast forward the video till the installation files are copied onto my hard disk okay friends you can see the windows is now about to restart you can allow it to restart or you click on restart now and in my virtual box is restarting it will show you whether you want to boot from the cd or dvd do not press any key let it boot from the hard disk and you can see and now you can see the windows installation is now starting up it's now completing the installation it again requires restart Okay, now the setup is starting, it's preparing your computer and now we have to configure the Windows 7 system. It will ask for your username that you want to add. I will type how I solve. You can type in any name that you want the username for your particular system. Click next. If you want to add a password, you can type a password or you can leave it blank. I'll leave it blank. In product key, I'm not activating the windows. You can skip this process. After I guess 30 days, it will say you need to activate the windows but after that nothing will happen. Some of the windows 7 features will be limited. If you do not have a product key you can use the system without the product key. It's not an issue. So we'll click on skip and we'll then since now Microsoft has stopped supporting windows 7 you won't be able to receive updates. So you can you can select ask me later because as such there will be no security updates for your system but I'll select the user recommended settings. And now you can set the time zone. Since I am based in India, I will select the Indian time zone. And you can set the date time. Most probably this will be correct based on your CPU time it will select. You can select next. And if you are using a home network, you can select home network. And now it will again start the installation process. It will take some time. Okay, so we have installed Windows 7. The next step is to install the drivers. You can do on your own or if you want to know how to install drivers on a freshly installed windows system let me know down in the comment section and i will make a dedicated video for that i hope friends you like this video and you are able to install windows 7 on your computer if yes smack that like button share this video with your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel howisol.com we have got several more technology videos tips and trick videos coming shortly so hit that bell icon to get notified as soon as we release a new video. Thanks for watching friends. This is Neil signing off. Bye bye.